Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second day of the first demo conference. Um, I think uh, the program is uh, very clear. Uh, I think yesterday was a great day for, for us uh, to actually get to know each other and also to speak about that one. The stream yesterday, also for those following online, was a little bit breaking up. We have a good recording, we will publish it. But also, we don't care so much about the day yesterday being aired because it was more for people here to get to know each other. Today is a frontal public day and uh, basically we will have four presentations uh, that are uh, documented and uh, published and we hope the stream, the people from remote can follow that. They can, because Federico <laughs> is behind <laughs> behind it and, and he is happy. So, uh, without uh, further ado, I think I'm going to introduce you uh, a very important but too modest to admit it person in Devon. And uh, we are going to talk about a team that we all love and we all like to get good at, which is minimalist design in systems. So, Katras, please take the word and uh, give him a round of applause. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for being around. I won't stay here because I, I can't. I, I hate this kind of thing, so I will move around. Uh, the title of the presentation was changed at the last minute, like three minutes ago, because Ralph said, oh, come on, how can you say there is the quest for minimalism? Indeed, that's a totally bonker concept. There is no single way to minimalism at all, so it was much better to, to put the quests for uh, minimalism. Okay, so the presentation will be pretty much uh, interactive. We start immediately with an interactive uh, section, which is definition of minimalism. Anybody wants to give it a try? What is minimalism? What do you think minimalism is about? Colin? The shortest distance between two points. <laughs> wow. wow, that's a very nice one. Fred? I have one. Minimalism is the baroque of the lazy people. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah. That's a very nice one. That's a very nice one. Please go on. Minimalism is going up on the idea that um, perfection is reached when there's um, nothing to take away. Okay, that's very good as well. Okay, anybody else? Please. It's a place Good if it's good for us, and that if someone only one that make it useful in this way. Okay, that's good. What I, I, I go on, Laurent? Minimalism is minimalism is doing what needs to be done and not uh, and not a thing more. Great. I think I like the most. Laurent, gone. <laughs> and Fred, <laughs> gone. <laughs> and I keep one to use, but even if you're. Explanation was a bit too, you know, too much for a minimalist, but I like it. <laughs> I think this is the best quote we can have about uh, minimalism. Perfection is achieved when, not when there is nothing more, more to add, but when there is nothing left to remove. I always like this one. I think I read this book the first time when I was 11 or something, and everybody knows it. Uh, it's, uh, it's definitely, definitely a, uh, definitely something, and, uh, and I really like it. Okay, so... I could stop my presentation here. <laughs> Please. Okay, someone uh, from, the, from the street is saying that minimalism is getting rid of bullshit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell, them, tell them to send me an email. I will send them a chocolate. <laughs> okay, so my presentation could stop here uh, because we're talking about minimalism. But unfortunately, we, all, we are all on, on our way towards achieving minimalism. So minimalism is not something that you that you get in step for all. It's a buff. It's not you know, it's not an object. It's more an objective right? that, rather than a concept that is always with you. So where uh, uh, where is minimalism being uh, being um, theorized? Let's say there are a lot of different uh, uh, minimalist um, movements around. It's not just something that comes at all from from software or from engineering at all. Uh, it, it, I think the best examples can, can come from literature, and I guess uh, Japanese uh, haikus are one of the best examples of minimalism, and we'll see a couple of them, not just Japanese ones. 
Uh, then architecture actually uh, is one field where minimalism has been uh, put to the extreme. There is the, the most uh, iconic uh, formalization of minimalism is this steel, which, which is Dutch, the Dutch movement from the 1920. And, uh, and they, they, they said, okay, look, architecture should try to, uh, uh, try to simplify everything. But we, we'll see a couple of examples uh, later on. Then music. We have several, uh, especially Northern European musicians and Japanese musicians, uh, which have, uh, who have actually uh, provided a very, very nice uh, contribution to minimalism. Then we have cinema, other arts, and obviously also computing, even if recently it's becoming more and more difficult to have minimal stuff. So let's start with uh, literature, okay? <coughs> uh, minimalism in literature. Uh, this is one of the first, well, most known haikus around. Haikus are very short, uh, very short poems. Short to the point that normally they have 17, 16 or 17 uh, syllables. So that, that's it. And, uh, and this is, runs like that. Uh, an ancient poem, a frog jumps in a splash of water. And in 17 short syllables, sounds actually, it's already evoking a, a, a whole uh, bunch of different uh, emotions. Okay? This is the, this is the, uh, the, the um, uh, goal of this kind of composition. But I'm not an expert in, uh, in Japanese haikus at all. This is from the, one, one of the masters, the, the masters of haikus. I will give you more mundane examples of haikus from a very good friend, uh, who is Gabriele Taveri from uh, Freaknet, who uh, actually uh, challenged himself into haikus of different sorts. And let's start with the first stuff. This is one that was composed last week, uh, and said, Forget it, he said and shot itself. <laughs> wow. I mean, it's... Uh, how, how much the reason behind it? I mean, what, what, could have, what kind of emotions uh, it, it, it brings to you, okay? But you might be more geeky people. And then, I have another one for you. It's cold. Fresh breakup is on the shelf. The sun is shining. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, absolutely awesome. There is another one which is even better. <laughs> And it's security through obscurity. I turn the light on. What a shame. <laughs> I mean, you see, it's, it's still hypers. Uh, we are still laughing about it. It's still literature. And, uh, and it's uh, absolutely minimal. It's, it's, it's bringing to us a whole bunch of emotions of all sorts of kinds. And then I, I close with this, with this one. This is a a very nice one. Uh, this was composed on the, on the night before general elections in Italy. And uh, it goes like, even in Palazzolo, I wish you could turn around. No atomic mushrooms. I mean, this is so extremely powerful in Italian. I tried this, this, uh, this translation. I hope as best you wouldn't mind it. Uh, but in Italian it's so, so beautiful. Okay? So this is the kind of stuff we are talking about. Architecture. So we, we said that minimalism is also about architecture. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this is an example. This is, one of, this is the only house that is considered fully minimalist. So this is the uh, sublimation of the concept of minimalism in architecture. This is the, the house. It could be any house from any historical period uh, in, in, in the human development. Okay, so it's the house. I don't exactly know where it is. I think it's in the Netherlands, but I'm not sure about that. Again, I'm not an architect. But this is the kind of things we are talking about. And um, another example is this one, which is another house uh, in Sweden, I guess, from the 1950s. And you see, I mean, this is also immortal. It's minimalist and immortal. It has the same kind of structure of the houses on water from the Paleolithic. <laughs> And still, the same functionality of the best of the Northern European design inside. So, this is the kind of stuff we are, we are talking about. Mm -hmm. And minimalism is also something that has been explored in uh, music. And uh, this is a... A 
composition from a composer called uh, Christensen um, from the 60s and 70s. We'll stop soon, no worries. <laughs> like that and then it goes in another theme and stuff like that. But it, it contains very few basic sounds and then it continues to dance on and on. And then we go to something that we should know much better. Uh, the World Wide Web, okay? Uh, which is, you know, minimalist by design. If you look back to the first web page ever published, <laughs> saying, come on, the web is going to rock the world because it's so beautiful, so minimal, so so broken today. <laughs> Definitely. And uh, <clears throat> I won't go any, any longer into the reason why the web is broken, but uh, there's, been, there's been some attempts into getting the web back to, uh, to the original design. Okay, at least three different um, proposals. And I, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, um, show you them. The first one is this one and says, this is a motherfucking website and goes on and on in saying why this is the kind of style that websites should have minimal, very essential, straight to the point just using um, uh, very few tags and pointed lists and stuff like that okay, this is the first example, number one <laughs> the second one why are you laughing at me? <laughs> sorry? Reading. Oh yeah, 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 and you have the links afterwards. The second one is this one, uh, which is, this is still a motherfucking website. <laughs> and uh, uh, this, this looks much more like the, web of, the websites of today, if you think about it, in terms of style. But, uh, come on, don't laugh at me, I, I mean, I, I feel bad. Uh, but you know, it's still pretty much, uh, pretty much, um, straight to the point. Okay, so this is our example number two. And then we have our example number three, which is something that all those define, oh, this is the best motherfucking website. <coughs> okay, and it has lots of stuff, it has some color, it has links of different colors, it has style sheets, it has also Java uh, JavaScript, <laughs> uh, it has all sorts of, uh, all sorts of stuff, <coughs> icons, uh, CSS3, HTML5, uh, it, can, it supports HTTP2, whatever else. Hey. Images <laughs> of cats, because <laughs> internet is for cats, for kittens, you know. Uh, yeah, and this satire, they, they say, okay, the previous examples are just uh, lame. Great. I said, okay, which is the most minimalist website according to your, to your uh, taste? Oh, the first one. The first one. Yeah, because there's nothing left to take away. Yeah. There's no CSS, there's no Java. It's already been gone. Yeah. Anybody else? The uh, second one leaves more space. space. The second leaves more space. So it's good or bad? I like it. You like it. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. I am a scientific person. I like feeling, I, I, I love actually feelings, but when it comes to this stuff, I would like to have hard uh, science helping me to assess which is the best in terms of humans. So I said something very simple. I, um, I compared the content versus total size. Well, the content for me is defined as the whatever remains where you have, when you have stripped all the tags. Okay? So, our original motherfucking website uh, has 3K of text and uh, uh, 5K of uh, 5 kilobytes of HTML. The ratio is 0 0.68. Okay, 68% of the stuff is actual content. The rest is formatting. The second one has a ratio of 0 0.75. The third one, if we don't take into account CSS, has a ratio of 0 0.47. If we take into account CSS, it has a ratio of 0 0.36. If we take into account JavaScript, it down, go, goes down to 0 0.27. So I didn't bother to put it here, okay? You, you should be uh, 
always moderate in critics. <coughs> Great, this is just a measure, come on, what, what does it mean? It's nothing. Okay, let's try another one. I try it with the more scientific one, which is the Econometer of Complexity, uh, which is basically how much, uh, how much is the entropy of, uh, of the text with respect to whatever it could be. I won't go into the details. Higher is better. The original one is 0.71, the second one is 0.74, the third one is 0.48. Okay? And then I did something that, uh, that comes from the Unix tradition. I used a nice uh, tool that is called Style. All of you know that, right? No, don't lie. Nobody uses it. And you should, because it's a very nice tool. Uh, it tells you, it computes a lot of metrics about texts. These appeared in uh, uh, Unix Documental work Workbench 1.0, 1978, okay, before version 7, Unix version 7. So, 100, in this case, I, I just said one of the index, 100 is easy, 0 is hard, in terms of readability. Great! The best motherfucking website is at 52. The second one is at 71, the third one is at 77, okay? So in terms of how hard is to just read the text, the third one is even harder. So they claim to be the best motherfucking website, forgetting size, forgetting everything, in order to make their point, they had to use a much harder to read text. What kind of minimalism is that if you have to explain it? Come on! <laughs> what are we talking about? So, just to, just to recap, to summarize, the first one is best in readability, because it, it has the highest index in terms of readability. The second one <coughs> is best in content versus bullshit pressure, because it just goes straight to the point, it doesn't, doesn't use too much. The third one, well, they have totally, possibly, totally missed the point at all, despite they say they are the best minimalist, whatever uh, stuff around. So the quest for minimalism, from the web co um, uh, point of view, is not just about size. It's not about size. It's not just about readability. It's not just about cuteness. It's not just about how many times you're stripped off. It's exactly about how efficiently information is presented to and accessed by the readers. Presented to and accessed by. So it's not just a matter of presentation, how does it look like, but how, how easy it is for the people who actually read it to understand what you want to tell them. These are two different things, completely different things. Okay, this is the lesson we can say we have learned today from the web. Let's go to something that we love. <coughs> we like much more software, okay? Ah, there is so much minimalist software around, right? For instance, in Unix, Keep it simple, stupid philosophy at work, everything, everything is uh, conceived, was conceived like that in the Unix world. Simple tools, set, cut, prep, TR, cut, paste, oak. I bet that at least 40% of you didn't know that we had cut and paste in Unix. I'm kidding, I know you didn't. Small orthogonal API, at least initially, we had 29 system calls. We, in Linux today, we are beyond 320. So, small code base is much less true with modern Unix system, systems, and the most important aspect of all, constrained environment. Constrained environment doesn't mean that you are not able to do stuff because of just technological constraints. You might, be able, you might not be able to do more stuff or to add more blood just because you don't want to. You have decided that your design must remain simple. This is what we did, they did when, the, when Unix was ported to the VAX architecture, which was much more powerful than PDP-11, yet ran basically exactly the same code, although there was much more room for bloating it up. They didn't, because they had decided that the constrained environment was key. Okay? Unfortunately, this is not always the case. This is how the Linux kernel size has increased over time. This is just a 
better measure. Forget, forget the real numbers, just count it all, 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 all around. So just to give you an idea. We started with Linux 2.0 uh, in um, 1996, up around uh, 8, kilobyte, uh, 8 megabytes. It is the old source code in Target Zip. And we are up around uh, 94 megabytes with Linux 4.0 which is rising a bit more to 110 megabytes with Linux 5.0 okay. So, is the Linux kernel a mean, an example of minimalism or not? That's a question for you, and there is more total X to come hmm? According to you, is the Linux kernel minimalist or not? Anybody else? It could still be classed as minimalist, um, except that they're growing the, the support for various different architectures of memory, CPUs, GPUs. Okay. Um, and that's going to cause it to just rise continuously until they start culling the really old stuff, which I think they do, but maybe not as, as, as often as... You know what is are. the largest directory in the Linux source tree if you ever have a, a, a tar engine zipped the Linux source tree I'll tell you, it's the directory called drivers today it, it contains 85% of the code in the Linux kernel but that's unfair because most of the drivers are in other parts of the kernel under FS for instance, all the file systems under net, all the different network protocols if we just strip this stuff, the kernel itself has remained at astonishing less than 5% of the illness. So the kernel itself, it's still a very small piece of code. Any of you can go through it and understand what is going on. Any of you can go through it. But what has grown around it is a wealth of other stuff which is needed to support new needs, new users, and also you also needed to it was also needed to support other as old as 35 years ago. You still can, in principle, run the Linux kernel on a i386 with an ISA or an MCA bus from 1993. There is no other operating system nowadays that can do, that can do the same, except for NetBSD. None of them. Because the le legacy is important. So, minimalism is not just about size. It's also about creating minimal disruptions in your user base. So, I'm not sure whether Linux is or not minimalist. But for sure, there has been some drive to keep it small. As small as possible. While at the same time, maintaining as, a, a large, as, a, 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 as large a user base as possible. Hmm. So we will we'll stay here with a, with a question mark, maybe. But there are some good efforts to re-establish minimalism, at least in the Unix, uh, in the Unix um, field. Uh, one of the most well-known examples is Suckless, which is a community of coders um, uh, that has started at the end, at the end of the 19, 1990s to rebuild the, the old uh, user space with simple tools. Uh, there is another community uh, which is much newer but has roots in supplements in many ways uh, with Bitrage. Parasim is, uh, is uh, one of the most uh, prolific members of this com community. Oh, by now, I think all of you have a GoFer client installed. <laughs> <laughs> we make sure of that, right? We <laughs> try. And they are concentrating on minimal software, minimal protocols, go for security, security through minimalism. So trying to go right to the point and uh, to avoid overbloating your stuff. Just because that's not the right thing. That's not the right thing. Another good example of minimalism, or quest for minimalism, is uh, uh, Muso, which is a re-implementation of the uh, libc, which is the interface of the kernel, uh, done in a more <laughs> sensible way. Um, re, re structured from scratch, uh, 
reorganized in such a way that everything works uh, in a, with the minimal possible effort and uh, still something that, that works pretty well in several different environments, not just Linux. Okay? And then there is another, another nice example that I like a lot. This is the tiny C compiler from, from Fabrice uh, Bellard. Uh, if you are in IOCCC, a fan of uh, the international obfuscated C called Contest, you will remember that this was the winning entry in 2001, I guess. And this is a compiler which started in 2 kilobytes. ANSI C compiler, which originally was a complete ANSI C compiler in 2 kilobytes. Now, okay, then he de obfuscated a bit and made the project, but still is the smallest possible, one of the smallest possible compilers, full, fully ANSI compatible, uh, compatible compilers around. You have it in uh, Demo Minimal Life, by the way, by the way. If I had to, to, to put GCC there, we would have need to add a maybe 30 or 40 megabytes more bloat. Mm. Okay? Oh, sorry, more stuff. But with GCC we don't. <laughs> and then there is another nice, nice example that is LibreSSL, which is an attempt to re rethink TLS from scratch, still from the OpenBSD uh, um, crew. Now there is another quiz. What do you think is the most powerful ASCII character? Oh, no, 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 I'm not talking about a Devon character which uses Devon ASCII. I'm talking about the ASCII chassis. What is the thing that if you removed it would break apart Unix in the most possible... Yeah, please. No. No? Uh, escape. Escape. Line feed. Line feed. Backspace. Backspace. What else? Uh, 13. Enter. Okay. Ca carriage return. Okay. I think I'll, I'll eat this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make an example to get us closer. Do you know what is large scale distributed computing? If you don't know, it's just a way of uh, distributing a, 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 a large task onto different CPUs automatically. So just uh, fire up the task and it will be executed and then you recollect the result and you are presented with the result. Okay? Great. There is a fantastic platform uh, developed by Apache, which is called Hadoop. Oh, by the way, the bullshit version that page is 0 0.41. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but I mean we're not interested in their web pages for the moment. It's a, it's a nice platform with with nice uh, routes into functional programming, into using map reviews and stuff like that. Anyway, so what would you use Hadoop for? Uh, one guy said, okay, I have 1.75 gigabytes of uh, data about all chess official chess tournament played around the world in the last century. Okay? This is what you can download, for instance, from the week in chess, TWIC, if you are in chess. Thus, compute some statistics on the number of uh, ties, wins, with black, white, and whatnot. Solution 1, use Hadoop with map reduce. Several machines, actually seven CPUs, took 26 minutes. Okay? Solution 2, use a pipe of three comments and do the same bloody stuff in 12 seconds. I'm not kidding. This is what this guy did. This is what this guy, oh, this is Sapleth, this is Musil, sorry, I should have. This is Apache, <coughs> this is what he did. Common online tools can be 235 times faster than your Hadoop cluster. He ran it on his computer 12 seconds instead of firing a job on a cloud, whatever, in, uh, in the East Coast. Please, uh, yeah. yes. uh, That heavily depends on how you select your problem. And I think yeah. like half a year selecting suitable problems yes. with like terabytes of data. And sometimes exactly the command line is faster. Yes. So you evaluate your problem before you very much yeah. cluster. That's, that's the point. And that's what exactly. Well, I, I'll give it to you then. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's the point. That's the point. Minimal is, is 
is not about facing the problems head down with all the cannons you can find around. Minimalism is sitting down, trying to understand what the heck of a problem you have there, and trying to see which tool can actually do that. If you go through this page, you will have the link in the presentation anyway. The presentation is just with text. Okay? I'll explain later. And, uh, and you'll see how it, how it did. So he started with a simple example. He said, okay, it might work. Then he went to something that, that took one minute. Then he said, okay, we can cut and cut stuff there. And he, at, at the end, the command is really a pipeline, pipeline of three commands. I think this is the final one. Uh, yes, this is the final one. Okay? Okay, looks, looks awful, but it's not that awful. I mean, if you're into Oak and, and Find and other XRs, it's pretty straightforward. It's not, it's not rocket science at all. It's just uh, thinking about your problem and solving it with the most effective uh, tool. So, the most powerful ASCII character. If you remove it, nothing will even boot this pipe. <laughs> Absolutely, because this is, the, this is the thing which allowed Unix to become a system usable by people who couldn't actually program. It was invented in 1971 by Doug McElroy, who was the head of the uh, Unix, well, it wasn't called Unix at that time yet, the Unix group, uh, room 1174. In AT&T loves Murray Hill. He came up, called it one night, and uh, said, "Look, process must be connected through a pipe." And they wrote 120. They say they, I mean, uh, Ken and uh, Dentistry say they wrote about 120 scripts on the first day, just because they could take the output of a comment pipe into something else and do something more. That is the single way that has boosted Unix the most. Use simple mechanisms, connect simple stuff, get something that is much more than the sum of their parts. Because that pipe is just made of silly comments. But what it does is absolutely awesome. It's much more than the three comments one after the other. Okay. Let's get back to something that we might know better. Linux systems, okay? Now that we have another, yet another question. And uh, I have always been a passionate about minimal Linux uh, distros. I will, I will show a couple of them. But before, before we go to that, do you remember which distro used this logo? I'm getting old. I'm, I'm just 39, but I'm, I feel very old. <laughs> None of you. Thumbs? Very good. You get one. Tom's root Ah, sorry, I was kidding. I found This is Tom's root boot uh, distribution. This is a distribution that was prepared in 19... The first version, I think, is from 1997. And uh, it stayed in one floppy, including the kernel and everything, a floppy, a, a higher format of floppy of 1.7 megabytes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it had everything. You could use that floppy and get on the internet. And read email, uh, read news groups, um, browse the web, browse the web, and everything in 1.7 megabytes. Okay? Then we have something like New Linux. Uh, Italians not remember it. This was uh, one of the historical distributions uh, put together by. And then I can initially, and then and then developed by the entire community. 12, 12 to 12, uh, 2 to 12 floppies according to which system you wanted. So the base system is just 2 floppies, 2.8 megabytes. The rest you had all sorts of applications, a la Zapper, let's say, with entire packages in, in each single floppy. And you could run a full system, full Linux system, in 24, 28 megabytes. Okay? This is what we are talking about. Actually, what's the left? And then I think the one, one that is a uh, uh, distribution we are all uh, remembering with, with fondness is Dan's Linux, which learned us how to 
strip down systems that were already in the region of one gigabyte at this point. Okay. The problem with the minimal, minimalist distros is that one thing is to enough. So once you have minimal distros, you say, okay, now why don't we add this and that? Why don't we try to put uh, this and that? So if we now go to the uh, list of lightweight Linux distribution on Wikipedia, 19, uh, 12, uh, 19, uh, 2019, so today, this is what we have. So I, I, I saw the number size. Uh, the first one is basic Linux, which I think is, is that as well. Uh, then we have open WRT, which is still kicking a lot. And then we have something that is around 8 megabytes of kind Linux and the 10 megabytes for the, for the this kind of code, nano Linux, Dantismo, which is dead, Sidelux, which is dead. Uh, and then we start with a level of, of distributions which are up to 1.7 gigabytes. A lightweight distribution in 1.7 gigabytes. Come on! It's like saying a lightweight man of 135 kilograms. <laughs> right? I'm not that far from that, but still. I don't, I don't claim I'm slim. I don't. Um, now is the question. Is there one minimum life a minimal district? I've criticized all these districts that have blown up themselves into the megabytes and gigabytes. The level in my life is less is the average megabytes. In ASCII is around 360 megabytes. Now I ask you, is the level in my life a minimal list? If you just look at size, we should say no. Minimal. I think I would argue the same way as for everybody about the minimums. Because for me, I mean, you are in a nice way that it is somehow minimal if you look at the core of it. No. I would say also, like, from, as you say, like, from the size, if you look at the raw size, you can say it's minimal. It doesn't mean it's a good thing to do, and we don't have a good thing anymore. So, yeah. in this regard, I would say no. On the other hand, I would also question a little bit, uh, like, how minimal can it be? Because we have to require. Uh, the sun in the environment is like, like okay, we want to support people, okay, well, that's what I think um, We want to offer something. So maybe it's a minimal for the purpose of the Okay, so that was to blow up my talk. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse myself. But 
It has a whole lot of other meaning and recovery tools that can be used as a recovery tool by itself. There is no totally useless stuff. There is exactly one application for each kind. You will not find three email clients. You will not find three browsers and news readers. You will not find three of anything. Just find one. Whatever I choose. If you have comments on service testing, please send them over. But you find one. This constitutes the necessary environment, including games and fun, for blind and visually impaired users. If they have a live system like that, they can, a blind or visually impaired person can function properly from the first moment he or she gets a little soul. With anything they have to do, from network configuration to uh, uh, network navigation in all sorts of ways, email, fun, spreadsheets, task management, editors, um, languages, and whatnot. It could be stripped down farther and remain functional. Yes, it could, but it would be functional for a smaller user base. And I think that I really uh, like what Mino said. Minimum is also about what you want your system to serve. So in a sense, this is not minimal in terms of size, but if you strip it down to 50 megabytes, then you can do that. I started from there. I started from a system that, that, that fit in 50 megabytes. But also the users. You could just use awk, grab, send. Didn't have demand, didn't have any language, didn't have support for all the uh, for, for frame buffer, for instance, which is used a lot by blind and vision impaired, impaired users. You can also look at uh, PDF in the minimal life, which is not needed for us, because it wouldn't. But for a, for a blind person, it's important to have the possibility to convert the PDF into a proper text file and go through it. Okay, so this is my point about it. Now, if I drive in, I'm on some. Uh, now, I'll show you how easy it is you have to blow something. Totally. Okay? And then I'll show you a nice example. Do you know, you always know Pidoff. Pidoff is one of the uh, two scenes of CCB uh, uh, scripts. A CCTV tool, however it's called, I don't remember that. Whatever, one of the three binary packages of CCTV. And it's just used to find the, the page of the process by name. Okay, this is something that you can do with a script, but PDOF, do it that after that. And then it returns, this is my actual PDOF of Max at that time, it returns the, all the PIDs uh, of all the process whose common name is what we put as first argument, separated by space. Okay? If you haven't tried it, try it. I'm not interested in it. Okay. There was a dividend bug back in 2010 from a user who said, we need arbitrary output format for PDOF. And I'll show you the, I'll show you the bug report. Uh, this is the one. Arbitrary output format for PDOF. Basically, the user says, I use a lot of PDOF with this phrase. I would like to say S phrase minus P for all <laughs> stuff in PDF. Please include a flag that is proposed uh, to call um, F, which takes a format from, from the user and, uh, and, uh, and then uses that, uses that format in with F to, to print stuff. Okay? This bug say that for. Names. Now, you know that two years ago, uh, Jess Smith from Digital Watch, which is a person we are extremely indebted with, stepped up, stepped up and said, I will not attend this meeting. Okay? And he's doing an enormous job in doing that. It's gone, it's gone through all day, more than 300 bugs, together with other people, uh, Dimitri, Bogotov, uh, and other of them. Uh, uh, through all the 400 bars in CCTV in the area, trying to close all of those that were obsolete, trying to solve all of those that could be solved, trying to understand what was going on there, and now the number of bars is down to 
150 in six months. Okay, it's done. They are an enormous, enormous job. So he said, I will incorporate this fix in CCP 2.93. Okay? Great. But the problem is that a friend of us, Matteo from Technical Art from Renard, I was a friend of us, uh, anyway. Okay? <laughs> Forget this bullshit. Forget it. Um, so he said, look, if you do that, if you just accept unsanitized input from the user, you're going to be fucked up. And this is an example. So he showed that it's possible to read the suck the of the coding process and then retrieve sensible information. Because the patch was in post. So Jesse was in good faith, but the patch was actually a security risk. Okay? So, uh, so they say, with the universal process which uh, was passing and trust the data directly to the F argument. And then, uh, and then, uh, and then Jess said, quite naively, because you think, okay, you are solving the problem. The problem is that you accept all kinds of unsanitized input from the user, then you restrict it. Just allow the input to be a character, a single character. Okay? Great, so I said, look, just mute them, that, and allow the, 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 the parameter of uh, F to be a single character. What the fuck are you doing here? PID, PID of is already separated piece with the character. It's already doing that. There is no need to press another flag in order to tell you which character it should set or use to separate. If it's just one character. You can do that with PTR. Well, there are, there are so many ways to do that. So, I, at a certain point, I stepped in very humbly and said, please, stop the madness. If we are using a flag, just to let a process do whatever it's already doing, just in a very different way, then it's the best way of introducing blood. Forget it. P of is already printing the PIDs as integers. And any formatting can, but I would say, must be done downstream by set of the whatever you like. Because this is what the Linux way is about. Do not bulk functions into each and every uh, tool. Make a tool that has this function, reuse it. Use the bar as much as you can. Okay. Minimal is minimal. Is there a minimal distribution in any way? I think I will surprise you by saying that the most minimal element of the level is a ball. It is, and I will show you that, that this is the case. The problem is the most minimal element of the level. What does he do? Now, let's start with what a problem does not do. A problem is not serving any package at all. A problem is not hosting a telephone repository at all. A problem is not redirecting you to a telephone repository at all. Please, record it. Send the mails. I am so silly fuck. Tired of reading the same stuff. Oh, I'm probably just walking and don't get it redirected. No, it's not wrong. I'm probably just walking in fun. Okay? So it's not doing any of these things. So what is he doing? What is he doing? I'm probably just in a synchronous tool which pulls down Debian and the corresponding Debian suits, uh, parts of the process. It creates a demand repo for each suite where the Debian specific packages all arrived. They, the ones coming from Tetanian, because this is what we want. And then it signs the repository and in the repository files of each suite. If you have any doubt about uh, 
the devil has not any problem with the sign of yeast. Yet just to check this is twice. Okay, that's, that's enough. This is a GGP 8192 bits key, which is signed in our repositories. And this is a machine that is offline, not digital, except for uh, by three people, and absolutely <laughs> very hard to get the data. Okay? Then we can discuss about HTTPS or whatever you like. But this is what has made the data process defined. And absolutely this is here. Okay? And then, at the end, it pushes the web to the webmaster and then packages. Hmm. Okay, this is the old picture. We wanted a nice picture of that, and I'm not able to do a nice picture in a small amount of time. But this is the old, the old picture. Uh, so, the DevMS, which at this point will become developers, uh, contribute to a package pushing into the Git development, which is our Git developer server. Then somebody who is authorized to do that files up a build in our continuous introduction infrastructure, which is served at the moment by Jenkins. Okay? Jenkins has a pool of build hosts, which are uh, for different architectures. Each build host is given the uh, sources, build them up, uh, sign them, and get them back to the CI, uh, CI server. The CI server finally pushes this stuff into the DAC. For those of you who don't know, DAC is a repository management tool which has a database on the back end to, uh, uh, to maintain all the main data about the repository itself. Then, uh, DAC pushes the demo part of the repository, just the demo part of the repository, to a package master. Okay? At this point, every two minutes, a proper job is run. Oh, sorry, sorry parenthesis. It is run every two minutes because the problem was rewritten again uh, one and a half year ago, maybe two years ago, uh, by the Nazis. And rewriting it just ago was written by, by, by Frank Lanza. was very nice, nice, but it was enormously slow for the task. So we had to wait 24 hours for a package to enter the repository. Now, now probably like run in uh, under five minutes. So every two minutes, this job, job uh, goes to the the demo part of the repo pulls down the corresponding Debian part of the repo. Does the match? There is no magic here. I put just a magic, but it's not a magic. Does the match? It is totally magic. Sorry? It is totally magic. No, no, it's not. Just look at the code. And then it pushes the merged version of the repo. What will be put in your in your sources of this file back in package master? And then all the mirrors uh, are seen from package master. Okay? This is what we are relying upon. Is this is minimum. Is this is Is this is minimum? Yes. Because tomorrow we can pick any of these components, kick it up, and replace with something else. We can, we can put tabby instead of dark, already we're working on that. We can, can stop using the name of oh, who we want. But in principle, we could manage another repository here. We could remove Jenkins and use another technology for the build hosts. We could move GitLab. But still, what, what is it? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, what is important here is the interface. Git here. Mm -hmm. Simple uh, HTTP requests here, okay, and, and then, then RC here, RC here, RC here, RC here, RC here. Mm. here. That's, That's it. We rely basically on thin air, and it's great. <laughs> This is a problem. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah.
No, I call this minimal, but uh, when, when I see that, and I hear it, I would rather call this module, which is not okay. Okay. 